So all right guys, we're back out here working on this blue 1987 turbo. All right, so today I'm gonna to try and get the balance shaft belt on and get the cover put back on. And we're gonna try and finish up installing the crossover pipe and we'll see where it goes from there. So all right, the other day we got the crossover pipe put back on, but it wasn't fully bolted up. So last night we got it bolted up and tonight I'm hoping to get the engine back together. I need to get the balance shaft belt on, the cover and the distributor cap back on. I also need to install the intake, all the vacuum lines and the fuel rail. So I'm gonna have to work late, but I've gotta get this done because tomorrow I wanna get the cross member put back on and we'll almost be finished with this car. All right, so I've got the timing and the balance shaft belts on now. Next I'll install the covers. So all right, I got the belts and the cover back on and I'll go ahead and clean up some of this mess tonight so that way tomorrow I can get the intake put back on. I was planning on doing it tonight, but then I realized that replacing these hoses that are ripped in half will be easier with the intake off and I won't be able to get the engine up to the proper height until we get the cross member back on tomorrow. So I'll just have to wait till then. The reason why these hoses are ripped in half like that is because whoever was working on this car removed the bolts to the cross member and just let the engine hang there and that pulled on the hoses until they broke so we're gonna go ahead and get the cross member back on before I replace these and then I'll get the intake put back on all right guys last night I blew out the engine bay and got rid of all that hood insulation and acorn shells and you can see the engine looks much better now I also got the cross member in today so you can see that the engine is no longer supported by the hoist and the engine is at the correct height so now I can go ahead and start connecting all the vacuum lines and coolant pipes. You can see here that I need to replace this coolant pipe here and also this one here and I'll take you guys down here and let you see the cross member. Alright so here's the two new pipes that I'm going to install. And this one here, the last time I checked, was no longer available. But what you can do is you can order two of these that go here. And then you can just trim one down and it's a perfect fit. Alright, so last night I got those two coolant hoses installed. I also got all the vacuum lines connected and now I'm ready to install the intake. All right, so before I put the intake back on, I went ahead and removed all the spark plugs so that way I could inspect the cylinders with the bore scope, and they all look to be in pretty good condition. Here are the old spark plugs. This one's one, two, three, and four. You can see four's a little wet here, but I'm hoping that's mostly from the oil that was in the intake. And anyway, now I'm gonna go ahead and install the new spark plugs here, and we'll get the intake put back on. All right, all the new spark plugs are installed, so now I'm going to install the intake. So, all right guys, last night I got the intake and most of the vacuum lines connected. Today I've been working on installing the air box and the charge pipes. I still need to clean this up a little bit more. There was a rat nest in the air box. And you can see here that there is some unfortunate stuff in the airflow meter that I need to get out. I actually scrubbed that out last night and 
I need to take a wire brush to it, it looks like. But anyway, I'm gonna get this cleaned up, get these charge pipes on, and I may try and start this car up today. All right, so I've got a wire brush here and I've just been gently breaking up the stuff. And when I first found it, it was really thick and the door was stuck closed. So I've removed a lot of it already, but I'd like to get it all out of here. So I'd removed most of it dry and it was just making a lot of dust. So I decided to wet it down a little bit. And although this is dried up, it really stinks. It's all right, this isn't perfect, but it does look much better and the door is no longer stuck. So I'm gonna go ahead and install this. All right, I have the airflow meter cleaned up now and I'm gonna go ahead and bolt it back on to the air box since I've got it cleaned out. And you can see that the factory used a red Loctite here and that's what I've applied to the bolts because you don't want these vibrating loose and then getting into the turbo. All right, so I have everything attached now, so I'm gonna go ahead and install it. All right, I got the airflow meter put in last night and I still need to get a filter for the air box. But today I figured I'd go ahead and put the oil in, fill up the coolant and install the new battery. All right, I have the oil filled up now. Next I'll go ahead and fill up the coolant and install the battery. All right guys, unfortunately I had to remove all this to get this pump out. As I was filling the coolant, I had a pretty significant leak here and you can see the coolant down in there and this brand new hose, that's where it was leaking at, but if you'll remember, the engine was sitting down in there and that old hose was holding on to the pump, so I think it tore the O-ring that was in there because when I took it out, it was broken up. So I replaced that O-ring and I've got it back together now, so I'm hoping that's gonna fix the leak and I'm gonna try and get it in and test it out. All right, so we got that leak fixed and I've got everything back together now. You can see we got the coolant topped off and the engine should be full of coolant now. So James has installed the suspension on this side here. And now he's over here installing this side. And once we get that together, we'll put the belts on and throw the battery in and we'll try to start this thing up. All right, last night I got everything put back together and the pump is still leak free. You can see I've got coolant in the system. Everything's bled. And I filled the power steering reservoir. So that's ready to go. I tried to install the power steering belt, but the store gave me the wrong one. It's too short, so I'll have to go back and exchange it. And then I need to clean these leaves out of the battery tray before installing the battery. But I'm almost ready to start it. I'm just waiting on the air filter to come in the mail. And I'll try and get these computers cleaned up here in a little bit. And hopefully we can get this battery installed and just see if it'll start up. All right, so I have all the fluids topped up and then today I need to take that power steering belt back and get it exchanged. Last night when I went, the power was off in the store and it closed early, so I didn't get a chance to do that. So I came back and I actually tried to start this car and I'm getting tack bounce, but unfortunately I don't think I'm getting fuel because it wouldn't fire up. So I'm going to pull the hose off over here and see if any fuel dribbles out. If not, then I'll go ahead and jump the DME relay. You can see that I have two of them out here because I swapped in another one and it didn't seem to fix the issue. So I'm gonna try and jumper that today and I'm gonna check the fuel pump. So I have a three prong jumper here and I'm gonna go ahead and install it and see if the fuel pump runs. So I have the jumper installed here and normally I would expect to hear a noise coming from the rear. and I'm not hearing the fuel pump running. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and pull that jumper out. Then I'll take this hose off here and see if there's any fuel. All right, I have the jumper out now. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove this line here and just see if there's any fuel in here. If it's bone dry, then that means the fuel pump is not working.
as you can see nothing dribbling out so we've got a fuel pump issue so to access the fuel pump on the late 944 or 944 turbo you'll need to drop this strap out of the way and you'll need a 13 millimeter socket to do that there's one bolt right up here that you'll need to remove once that's done you can remove this panel and you'll need to do it carefully so that way you don't rip any of these fuel lines here because in order to remove the panel completely you'll need to remove this clamp that goes around the fuel pump so once you remove this clamp you'll be able to drop the plate down out of the way also be aware that these wires are clipped in one corner of the plate and you don't want to break that clip off and as you can see, the wiring and everything still looks good back here, so I think everything's original. This appears to be the original fuel pump here, and it's wrapped in a rubber sheet. So I'm going to go ahead and get it out. All right, I have the fuel pump out now. So I'm going to go ahead and stick this jumper back in here. And if the fuel pump is working, we should hear it running. Go around underneath here. Let's see that you don't hear anything so it tells me that the fuel pump is most likely bad all right with the jumpers in you can see that i have nearly 13 volts at the fuel pump so that means that the fuel pump is bad so i'll go ahead and order another one all right so i took the other belt back they were actually supposed to give me this belt but they gave me a 365 13. so i'm gonna go ahead and get this on and that'll be pretty much everything in the engine bay back together and i'm gonna start working on the brakes tonight so, all right, last night I got the brake calipers off. I measured everything and ordered the new kits, so I should have those soon. I'm also waiting for a fuel pump, and other than that, I figured today what I would do while I'm waiting for those parts to come in is go ahead and work on this interior. I need to get the radio installed, and I need to put these computers back and get a lot of these trim pieces put back together. So here's the new head unit I'm going to be installing and first I need to go through with my multimeter and see where all these wires go. So alright, I've got the wiring here and as you can see the speaker wiring has been cut so I'll directly solder those wires to the new harness. However, the power wires are still intact, although they've been removed from the connectors. So I don't want to cut these, so I'll use some spade terminals and put some heat shrink over them to keep those original. So here's roughly the idea. I'm going to solder the wires to these spade terminals, and if anyone ever wants to repair this wiring, they can, because I'll be leaving it intact. So anyway, here's the idea. I think it looks rather nice and I didn't have to hack anything up. It's completely reversible and all you have to do is unplug the spades that are underneath this heat shrink. But the heat shrink is also marine grade so these are glued on there pretty good and they won't accidentally come unplugged. So now that I have the power connected, I'll go ahead and hook up the speakers. Alright, so here's how the wiring turned out, and I think it looks pretty nice considering it was all hacked up before. And the radio is working, so I'll turn it up so that way you can hear it. Seems to get lots of stations. Maybe I won't get a copyright strike if I just play something like this. So when I found this console, it had a piece of masking tape stuck to the top here, and it had been on there so long that it hardened, so before I put the radio in, I figured I'd go ahead and get this off. Alright, that didn't take very long, and already the interior looks much better. So alright guys, last night I got the new head unit in, and as you can see, the interior is starting to look much better. 
I've ordered a new shift boot that should be here in a few days. So now I want to go ahead and install the DME and KLR and get all this cleaned up here. And right now I have James underneath the car removing the CV axles because when I was underneath there checking the fuel pump, I noticed that they were ripped up. So I'll try and get underneath here and let you see them. But anyway, he's going to get those out tonight and they should be in in a few days. All right, I've got the DME attached to the bracket again, and this is pretty much how you're gonna install it with the cables up. And you can see how the alarm is attached there. All right, I've got everything back together now, and I'm guessing they took that apart because they had a no start issue, but it was probably because the fuel pump was seized up. But anyway, the only thing I really have left to do in the interior is replace this shift boot and the sun visor clips here. This is what's left of them and you can see they just have crumbled to pieces. All right, I have the front calipers off now and while I'm waiting for the rebuild kit to come in tonight, I'll go ahead and remove all these pistons and get these calipers cleaned up. And you can see what's left of the pads here. There was just enough pad left to keep it from tearing up the rotor but I've ordered some new pads as well. All right, I just got the new air filter in and I figured I would go ahead and install this before I began working on the calipers. All right, I've got the air filter installed now, and as you can see, this engine is finally starting to come together. So, all right, today I'm gonna to be working on the front calipers here. Last night I went ahead and removed the pistons. You can see them sitting here and here. Now, if you plan to use compressed air to remove the pistons, then be very careful because you can get severely injured. They come flying out of there. And over here, I have the new rebuild kits for the fronts that came in today, and I also have this set for the rears since I'll be rebuilding those as well and I also picked up some new brake pads for the front and rear. All right so I've got one caliper rebuilt now I'm gonna go ahead and put the pistons back in and start on the next one. All right and that's one rebuilt caliper with brand new pads. All right I have the second caliper rebuilt now and I'm getting ready to install it on the car and over here I have all the old seals. So all right guys, this car slowly coming together. Last night I rebuilt the front calipers and got those reinstalled. Today I'm going to work on the axles. The other day James was back there removing the bolts and he said that two of them were stripped. So today I need to drill those out. All right, I now have one of the bolts drilled out and I'm ready to remove this axle. So once you have your axle removed, you'll just be able to reach in and turn the stud. It should come out very easily. Just like that. All right, I've got the axle out now, and what I'm gonna do is replace these torn boots. You can see how bad that is. And I've got two kits here, one for each end. They come with the boot, new CV axle grease, a new Oedeker clamp, a new washer, and a new circlet. Alright, I have both axles out now, and this one is the driver's side. I also had to drill a bolt out of this one as well, and you can see just how ripped up this boot is. Now, normally I would just replace these axles, but we're trying to do this on the budget, so I just thought I'd replace the boots. Alright guys, I got the axles finished up now, and I've already installed the driver's side axle and got the exhaust back in, and here's the two bolts that I drilled out that I'll be replacing on this axle. I'm going to leave this one out for now because I'm going to be replacing the fuel pump and the fuel filter and this will give me a little bit more room to access the fuel filter for now. But anyway, this was a very messy job and you can see the old axle boots over here. Alright, so here's how the driver's side axle turned out and right now I'm working on removing the rear brakes and getting those rebuilt. Alright, I have the rear calipers here and I'm going to go ahead and start rebuilding them. All right guys, I've now got both rear calipers rebuilt and they're ready to go back on tomorrow. So all right, I actually have all four calipers back in the car now, but someone online saw that I was rebuilding the brakes and asked me for some tips on rebuilding these calipers. 
and for the most part it's pretty straightforward the only thing you may have trouble with is trying to get all the pistons to come out at the same time so what I did was I left the brake pads in there and then I inserted a third brake pad in between them and then I took my compressed air and I blew it into the caliper and so for instance let's say only this piston here comes out well it'll be stopped by the brake pad and that will give an opportunity for the rest of them to come out to this point once you have all the pistons pressed up against the brake pads what you can do is remove the center one and then you can keep blowing compressed air in there until they come out to here and at which point you can just remove these and you should be able to remove the pistons so, all right i just got a new fuel pump new fuel filter new dme relay and new sun visor clips in i'm gonna go ahead and install the fuel pump and the fuel filter and let's see if this car start up so as you can see with the axle removed here i have just a little bit more room to access the fuel filter and the fuel pump so all right i've got the old parts here and the new parts ready to go in so all right i got the new parts mostly in now i'm going to wait to put this cover on after i make sure everything doesn't leak but also from this angle you can see just how much room that you get from having the axle out all right, I now have the plate put back over the fuel pump and the rear axle installed. So, all right, I also got the sun visor clips in today, so I'm going to work late and get as much done as I possibly can. You can see the old clips over here, and someone's lost the screws, and so I'm just going to put some stainless steel ones in there. They should look nice. All right, I've got the sun visor clips installed now, and those stainless steel screws don't look half bad, considering that's the only thing that I had around that would fit. All right, I've got the new fuel pump in and everything's connected. I've even got the new DME relay installed. Now, when I was turning it over before, I noticed that I didn't have much oil pressure. So what I did was I took my air tank and put some pressurized air down the dipstick. And then I turned it over before I've started it here just to make sure that I have oil pressure. So I should have oil pressure when I start the car now. Well, let's see how it goes. Excellent. I have the airbag light flashing, but I'll resolve that later. And all the fuel came out when I was trying to install the pump, so that's why it's on empty. Full pressure looks good. The alternator is not looking too good. Nope. Might have a bad alternator here. And let's see what happens. You can see that the boost gauge is moving, so that's a good sign. It seems to be idling well. Go around here and let you guys hear it. So, all right, everything seems to be going well. I still need to bleed the brakes after rebuilding them, and I need to sort out what's going on with the alternator. But other than that, everything looks to be good. That's all right, I've got the car idling. I just wanted to check the alternator because I believe the gauge may be off since the warning light isn't on. So, as you can see, the alternator seems to be working fine. And right now I'm just looking for any coolant or oil leaks. It does sound like the headers are leaking. So I'll try and check that out. I let the car idle a while and it does look like the alternator is charging. It just looks like there's something wrong with the gauge. I don't have any warning lights and I didn't idle it very long. But as you can see, I've got a few coolant leaks here that I'm going to have to figure out what's going on hopefully the radiator isn't cracked so anyway there looks to be a lot of coolant pouring out of the radiator and everything looks pretty good up top the only thing that i see wet is this area here hopefully i can tighten that up and that'll fix the issue but that is a lot of coolant 
So all right, I think I found the coolant leak. I pulled on this hose and as you can see, this is snapped off, which is a common problem. And I've got a spare one here. So I'm gonna try and get the other piece out of the radiator there and hopefully that'll fix the leak. So all right, I had to remove the air box and this charge pipe to get in there and remove that broken piece from the radiator. And you can see it here. I used an easy out to remove it. And here's the new one that I'm gonna be installing. All right, I got the new one in, and as you're tightening this down, you want to just barely snug it up because they will snap right in half. All right, I got everything back together now. I'm not leaking any fuel out of the back, and I'm no longer leaking coolant here. You can still hear that loud clacking, and I believe that's actually just bad spark plug wire. So I'm going to try and investigate that tonight. I don't actually believe the exhaust is leaking after all, but I'll have to look into it. But anyway, let me show you where I fixed this. And you can see that it's no longer leaking, but I'm going to go ahead and turn it off and try and fix that loud knocking. All right, so that was a simple fix. If you ever hear anything like that, it's usually because the spark plug boot isn't seated right. And it was number three. I guess I was messing around and I must have tugged on it and pulled it up a little bit, but I was able to push it back down. I know when I first started the car, I didn't hear that noise and it developed after I started messing around. So anyway, push number three back down and it's running perfect again so the car has been fully brought up to temp i have good oil pressure and i'm not leaking any coolant anymore so that's very good news today i'm gonna try and get the sway bar on and maybe we can drive this thing so all right today i'm going to try installing the sway bar the other day i picked up all new hardware and i also ordered some new bushings that i have here this is how the original ones look and I also put these on here, although I've ordered some original ones and I'm just waiting for those to come in. But these should work fine if I just want to test drive the car. And I also got this in the mail, so hopefully I can get the shift lever in tonight. So I'd have the sway bar in now and I put nylock nuts on everything and I'm still waiting for the drop link bushings to come in. But for today, I'm going to go ahead and replace the shift boot. All right, I got the shift boot for the turbo in the day, and I'm in my car because I actually already have one of these shift boots installed, and you can see how nice they look. And here's the one I'm gonna be replacing. So, all right, I've got the knob inserted into the new boot here, and you wanna go through the top, making sure that you have the seam lined up with the groove that's on the knob. And once you get to this point here, then you're going to start trimming this away here just very slightly so that way you can wrap it around and then put the button on top. All right, so I brought it outside for some better lighting, but I trimmed the leather down, then tucked it in behind the insert, and now I'm ready to install it. All right, when you're installing this boot in the car, you'll want to take these slits and line them up with the clips that are on your trim ring. And then once you do that, you don't have to trim anything. Just make sure you tuck it down in there and then you'll snap it into place. So here's what we started out with and here's how it looks now. So all right, now that I have the shift boot replaced, I'm gonna be removing the airbag and the steering wheel to get in there and inspect the clock spring. The first time I got in this car and we were trying to put the suspension on, I turned the steering wheel and I heard something pop in here. And as you can see, the airbag light is blinking repeatedly. So I believe that there's something wrong with the clock spring and I have a spare one. So I'm gonna try swapping that in and see if I can't get this light to go out. All right, so the first thing I need to do is disconnect the battery here and then I'll be ready to remove the airbag. So all right, here's the replacement clock spring and as you can see, it's in much better condition. This one here is bent and it's also broken down in here. So I'm hoping that this is going to fix the issue because it looks like someone had removed this at some point and then reinstalled it incorrectly. All right, so everything's back together now and here's the old clock spring. I'm gonna go connect the battery and see if the light goes out. So all right, I got everything back together now and I just fired it up and unfortunately the airbag light is still blinking. So while this was one of the issues, I may need to keep investigating and I may even try resetting it just to see if that does anything. 
Sorry guys, I thought before I reset the airbag light, I'd go ahead and get the front wheels on this car so that way I can get it down on the ground and move it around. I'd like to see this car drive and I'll spend the next few days trying to troubleshoot the airbag light. There'll probably be yet a third part on this car since there are still a lot of little odds and ends that I need to go through and do, such as cleaning the engine bay and then making sure everything in the car works. So stay tuned for that. But for now, I'm ready to test drive this thing. So all right, I got the front wheels put on last night and I actually got to drive it around a little. Clutch pedal's a little soft, but other than that, it seems to drive well. I still need to figure out what's going on with the airbag light. But aside from that, this car is almost ready to go after I get it cleaned up. So as I mentioned, the airbag light in this car is flashing rapidly. And I've tried clearing the faults and even tried reading the codes, but nothing happens. It just keeps flashing repeatedly. So I talked to a guy who knew a little bit about airbag systems and he said that usually the flashing light means that the clock springs bad. And as you know, I've already replaced this one. So I went ahead and took the steering wheel off last night and then checked that the clock spring was good with my multimeter and it is. And he said, if it is actually good, then it should just go out on its own. Unfortunately, that still hasn't happened and I have verified that the clock spring is good and getting a good connection. So, I'm not sure where to go from here. I need to get the light to stop flashing before I can try and reset any codes. So if your airbag light is on, you can reset it at home. All you need to do is go under the dash and then you're gonna find a Molex connector with a red cover on it. And you're gonna pull this cover off and then you're gonna insert a wire in the center of this Molex and then you're going to ground it somewhere here and then there's instructions on Clark's garage that gives you clear instructions on how to do it basically you want to ground that center pin out and then you're going to turn the ignition switch on and then you're going to wait five seconds pull the ground wire off wait another five seconds and then attach it for five seconds and then turn the ignition off and that should clear the airbag codes. Unfortunately, that's not working for me since the light's flashing. So anyway, aside from the flashing airbag light, everything seems to work well, and hopefully I'll get this resolved and you'll see that in the third part. All right guys, there's still a lot of things I need to repair on this car, so be sure to stay tuned for part three. Also be sure to like and subscribe. I upload videos like this every week. And come join us on Facebook. I'll put a link in the description below. I also want to thank everybody who supports this channel on Patreon. These videos would not be possible without you. But anyway, guys, that's going to do it for this episode. So I hope you enjoyed it. And we'll see you next time.